Hi, it's Katie and welcome to my corner of the world. All right, so I am here with my palettes of the month for 2024. Last year I did one of my large palettes as my palette of the month. And after decluttering my large palettes, I realized that a lot of the ones that I was going to use were ones that I already used last year as my palette of the month. And it's because I love them. So I didn't want to just repeat them. So, but trying to put new ones on every month was difficult. And I started thinking, well, maybe I'll supplement them with my smaller palettes. When I went back to look at my smaller palettes, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a palette of the month with my smaller palettes because I don't usually give them as much love. Uh, you haven't really seen them talked about or reviewed as much. Some of them are newer and I haven't really talked about them at all or used them at all. So hello Zooey. Hello Mitty. The cats are running around at three in the morning for some reason. Um, so I decided to do a palette of the month with my smaller palettes this year. So let's go through them. So I don't know what it is about January, but January, I always want like, like the grays or something. Thing. I don't know if it's the new year and the, you know, the uh, crystal ball and everything that drops, but January... I decided to go with my Juvia's Place, the Rebel Grays. These, now, I will still have uh, do a Shop My Sash and have a larger palette with this, but this is the one I want to concentrate on for January. And I just, I don't know, it gives me the January feels. So the Rebel Grays is January. It had to be the Natasha Denona Cupid palette for February. I mean, it's called the Cupid palette. I have to use it in February, right? And it is just a stunning palette. This is, if you could put my shades in a palette, it, it would... I'm sorry, the cats are going crazy. Again, three in the morning. Um, this is just a stunning palette. I can't wait for February to use it. It, this is a really odd choice for March because it is the Winchester Mystery House. You would think it would be an October choice. Two things that made it the March. I couldn't figure out a March palette. I just, I'm not a, I'm not big into green. So all I can think of for March is green, but I don't use greens a lot. So it was really difficult for me to find a March palette. So I ended up going with this one for two reasons. Nothing about the color story here makes me think March. <laughs> um, but the Winchester Mystery House makes me think of my parents because that's how I know about it. They lived in in San Jose for a couple of years and I would always go see the Winchester Mystery House when I went out there. It was one of my favorite places to visit when I went to see them. So, oh, and my mom's birthday is in March, so... Oh, that's one of the reasons I put this in March. The other one is I just want to get in there and play with these shades. They're gorgeous. And I didn't want to wait too long to do it. So I put it early in the year <laughs> instead of in October. So this is going to be my March small palette. April, oh, I was trying to get back to oh the kind of spring summery colors. Um, this is my Visart. This is one of the Petite Pro. Oh, um, I'm trying to see if it gives me a color on it. I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Pro Dew. I don't know if that's the color or not. We'll find out later. Um, but with like the peach in here and everything, I thought it, it started leaning more towards spring. Some of these other colors I kind of think of as more fall, but uh, with these two and kind of the shimmers I was like okay this is transition time name from kind of winter to spring thing and then I went in May with the purple haze from Huda again we're getting into the purples maybe a little bit of pinks and lilacs make me think spring so that is my May one. 
getting into the summer months. I have my Pat McGrath Labs. This is, is the Divine Rose, I think is the name of the palette. Um, this is the one that, that came in in the um, FC Icon. And I just thought, like, those pinks are gorgeous for summer. I like doing lighter er, um, looks in the summer. So I just thought it was so pretty. Yeah, so that is my June palette. For July, I went with the Laura Geller. Now this is kind of somewhat larger. It's a face palette. And so we have both the eyes and a blush and a highlight. Um, I got lots of compliments when I wore this one day. Um, so I do want to really use it and try it again. Um, but because the shades are really light, it made me think of summer and I don't like to do a lot of really dark looks and kind of with the more peachy pinky colors. I was like, okay, this is July. August, I went with the auto bomb. Uh, I was thinking vacations and it reminds me of a license plate so that is why I went with this one for August there we go and the black primer always wants to fall out but that is what that one looks like um again and I mainly went with this one more because of the outside look to it it but I think um a lot of times the balm ones even if they look darker they kind of have come off kind of light so I thought this would be a pretty one for August and the tin makes it really nice for travel. So if you are going on an airline or something, it's a little bit more protected than in just cardboard. So that is the August one. And September, we're getting back towards the, the darker fall months. So I went with my Pat McGrath Labs. This is, does this one have, this is the Mini A in Midnight Voyage. So six pans. Again, I thought it started getting more back to the coppers and browns and the deeper plums for uh, the fall. So that is the September one. October, we go back to, this is the Petite Pro Un. So, Du is the, the um, kind of peachy one. That's the one that I, I kind of had for April. Uh, this one, the Un, I think is perfect for fall. This is my October one. To me, this is just a beautiful fall palette. It's got the browns and coppers, a little bit of golds just a touch of purple there it just to me and even the outside just screams fall to me so that's the october one and november i was originally going to go with this uh signature symphony from ofra for december but i wanted uh, my i have another palette that just makes sense for december more and even though it was my December palette this past year, I really didn't talk about it much because I just kind of, you know, December was kind of a loss. This again, though, I think is a stunning, beautiful palette. It, I think it's great for fall um, or even the holiday season, which is what it was originally kind of intended for. But um, I just love this palette. And so it is going to be my November one. And... And December, like I said, this was my December palette this past year, but this I do keep with my smaller palettes. This is from Too Faced. I do love this palette. Um, and I think it's perfect for the holiday season. It has this touch of, of red and green along with these other like neutrals. So, oh, I love this palette. I, I think this is one of the best ones that Too Faced has done for holidays. So that will be my December one. So let me know what you think of my choices. I know some of the times the color stories are very, very similar. Um, but 
these are kind of the colors that I enjoy. I did try to get a couple of things, or at least not put them back to back. But um, uh, these are the mini palettes that I'm going to be using this year. Er, er, let me know what your thoughts are. Er, we're, of course, going to start here with January. And I will do a shot by stash and show you the other things that I picked to go with the Juvia's Rebel Grays. That is it. That's all I have for you today. Until I see you next time, have a great day. Bye.